In this lecture, I will be introducing the Violet UML editor and uh, about object-oriented programming planning using these tools. What is a Violet UML editor? It is a free web software you can download from internet, and it provides you different design tools for class diagram, object diagram, and other dynamic view of the diagrams. So there are class diagram, object diagram, and a few different documentation tools for different activities and states and sequences and cases. When you started this software, after you download, you will see some window like this. You click on the class, and then click on this diagram, you will generate a class. And on the right hand side, you have the undo, zoom in, zoom out, delete, and redo. And second row, you have copy and paste. And this diagram tool will give you the different symbols that you need to organize your classes. And let's work on the first diagram. Let's look at the diagram. A diagram is composed of nodes and edges. To add a node, you click on the matching UML tool on the right sidebar, and then click anywhere in the diagram to edit. You can also use your mouse scroll button to select another UML tool to connect the two nodes with an edge. First select the edge tool, then click on the first node and hold down the left mouse button, drag the mouse to the second node and release the mouse button. The edge is inserted between the two nodes. There is one exception. You can insert a node connector edge simply by dragging from a node node to anywhere on the diagram. So right here, node is a connector, but you can just click and drop. And then the rest of the relationship, you should use a click and then draw and release type of a insertion. And right here, a class diagram for the student class. You can click here and click here in the main window once and you will create an object and double click on the object and you should be able to come up with such a diagram that you enter the class name and then the attribute and the methods. Other UML tool, valid UML tool is free. It is not the best but good for students. We will use this tool often in the part two of the course regarding the package, inheritance, abstraction, in interface, use, aggregation, and the many other topics about object-oriented programming. Class diagram is a static view of OOP. Object diagram is a dynamic view of the OOP. Okay, right here I need to make some clarification. Even though right here it has static view and the dynamic view, the object diagram is actually in the static view, but actually it will be mentioning about how data flow from one class to the other. So this is actually a description of the data flow. But it is static because that uh, it doesn't show you the time domain uh, relationship. While dynamic view from the tool point of view is dynamic because it's talking about the transition of the program and the object diagram doesn't give you the transition of the program. And I call it dynamic because the object diagram is not just a class, there is no flow, but this uh, object has a flow and object need to have uh, instantiation, class doesn't need it. So I use this term dynamic, but it actually is a static view for object diagram, but object diagram is a looking at the flow of the data flow. From data point of view, it's dynamic, but from programming point of view, it's actually static. So other four diagrams are model of core. They are not an essential part of OOP, but will be useful for general programming. We will use this tool often as a documentation tool along the advancement of the coursework in part 2b. After you finish it, you can save it by click File, Save As, and browse through the directory and save it. The file will be saved as a HTML file. And you can also export it by File, Export, and you can save as a JPG file or PNG file. Our Unum project. 
we will be working on the poker game for player text more poker. What we developed so far about this poker game is the following. I have a complete listing. And then the last one is the next uh, unit project we will be working on. Other than this, we have already covered in a different topic of uh, this uh, poker game. Starting from static uh, function uh, methods, and then uh, slowly we add more function. And in this chapter, we start to work more on to the object-oriented programming, and from car to deck to hand, and then to a one-player game, and we add a GUI for it as well. But this software development, I actually show you the following knowledge about top-down design, how to break down a system from top-down point of view. And then uh, when you implement, I show you how to implement from a smaller piece to do the implementation. And then stepwise uh, refinement, now you tweak uh, the nuts and bolts one by one, slowly improve the program. And then use the static method for structural programming first, and then convert it to uh, object-oriented programming. You don't need to do this every time when you do programming. You can actually directly go for object-oriented programming if you know it. And then we try to use a divide and conquer so that the software can be uh, working on from the smaller piece to the larger piece. And then focus on solving some top problem. Don't let the problem bother you. The techniques used in this series of projects, including the 1D and 2D array, shuffling, reverse sorting, block sorting, split the merge algorithm, and do while loop for the text mode menu design. And then we also have the program handler to convert code in static method to instance methods as a way to grow a class. And then selection sort, I give you a selection sort with availability array for smaller data size and non-destructive sort. And I also use the occurrence array for generation of strengths of the hand or in the Bible work count case, I also use it for work count. And then finally, I used the evaluation of some game ball using the strength score by A rank array as a simple way to evaluate the game status. And this is very important because if we want to design something that is AI based computer program to play a game, that means that you can enable the human against computer type of program, then you need to have a very good game ball evaluation strategy. And how deep can you do and how can you handle the your hardware to support your programming. That's a very important issue as well. So we learned so many topics by doing this series of projects. And the last one we will be working on is the poker game with four players. And hope you enjoy the Unum project. Thank you.